Okay, so today we are looking at a Debian-based KDE desktop known as Zevon OS, and they have just released their Neptune edition, their latest Neptune update. Now, Neptune is sitting at version 1.99. They have had many previous versions of Zevon OS Neptune, and this is the uh, Debian-based, as I said, uh, KDE distribution rocking KDE 4.6.2, so the latest uh, stable KDE software compilation. Now the interesting thing about this distribution is it's pulling from both Debian Wheezy and Debian SID, depending on what packages it's using. But I think for most of the desktop applications we're pulling from Debian Wheezy, but for the more stable stuff they wanted to stick with the obviously stable Debian repos, therefore they're using Debian SID. So we are using the latest 2.6.38-something uh, kernel. The 2.6.38 kernel is going to be fairly widespread fairly soon. And Neptune is a very interesting distribution. And I know those sentences weren't very coherent at all, so stick with me. Hopefully this will improve. First of all, as always, well, let's talk about look and feel. We've got a very interesting theme going on here. Generally speaking, a lot of KDE distributions don't customize the, uh, the workspace and the appearance of the KDE desktop that much. Uh, but you can see here that they've made some nice little changes here to the um, to the uh, uh, to the window panels here, to the window borders. They've put an interesting little tab interface on the top here. Now, of course, we all know these aren't actually tabs. This is just the way they've themed the KDE, um, the oxygen settings. But to be honest, it looks quite nice. It's good to see some changes in a, uh, in, a in a desktop every now and again. And I think it works well. Makes it look a little less bland and gives it its own personality, which is pretty cool. Uh, secondly, apart from all the stock standard KDE wallpapers that we've all seen before that you that are available here in the uh, in the desktop settings, they also give you uh, in the home folder they give you a folder of wallpapers that they have made themselves. So let's just have a look at some of them. Some of these wallpapers uh, they do date back a little while to earlier releases, but some of them are also fairly recent. So you can see here that we've got an interesting uh, Aztec looking temple one. We've also got some very nice bridges and we've got some very nice uh, graphic art here that they have designed. They've got some very nice logos and they've got some KDE4 based wallpapers and quite honestly they do a nice job. So that's all about look and feel for now. They do stick with the standard air theme for the widgets and workspace, but they do have, of course, their own custom uh, oxygen settings. So let's quickly move on to the pre-installed software. Now, honestly, because it's a Debian-based system, you can get nearly everything under the sun. So by default, we get the we get the kickoff menu, but just for the sake of demonstrating, we're going to put it over to the classic menu style, just because that's easier to navigate. All right, first of all, you're going to notice that we have in development, we have Eclipse, and Eclipse is obviously a Java development SDK, which is pretty cool, as I haven't seen one of those bundled in a distribution before. Interesting addition there. You can see we've got different uh, controls along the top here. This would be for, um, com uh, for creating your own Java applications and generating Java code. Very nice inclusion as far as development applications go. Moving right along, under games, we have a very fun Hedge Wars installed by default. Now, I'm not going to launch Hedge Wars because, quite honestly, it, probably the graphics aren't going to cope for it. This is, uh, this is just running from the live ISO in VirtualBox. I have actually used it on my local hardware, but I'll be getting to that a bit later. Under graphics, we've got Acquire Images, we've got DNG Converter, we've got Expo Blending, all the standard KDE stuff. We've got GIMP included as well, and we've also got some scanning applications and, of course, uh, yeah, LibreOffice Drawing. No biggie there. Under Internet, we've got all the basic KDE stuff, as you know, and, uh, and also we've got our own um, wireless manager here, and we've also got iStub as the mail and news client. Uh, iStub is practically the... Um, the branding free version of uh, Thunderbird. So as you can probably notice by the name there. We've also got Chromium Web Browser as your default web browser, but we also have Conqueror if you so need it. 
Wireshark is also an interesting inclusion. Uh, Wireshark is network analysis, and basically what you can do is look into these, uh, look into different networks, see which ones are running, which ports are open, etc., etc. It's quite a helpful application for those who are trying to keep their network under control. It brings it up in a nice web. Uh, web page type interface as you can see here and you can see uh, you can ask for interface lists, capture options and uh, and opening previous logs etc etc. Um, so interestingly enough it claims that it's the world's most popular network protocol analyzer and I imagine it is amongst IT professionals. We also have a, VN, a VPNC uh, GUI which is for connecting to uh, remote desktops uh, over, the, over the network and under multimedia we have the Alsa Mixer GUI, we have Amarok Audacity Desktop Recorder included by default which is nice Encode which does exactly what it says it does, K3B, Kden Live, the video editor, very nice Kmix, uh, the M player, VLC and YavDTD now you will notice uh, VLC I did have some issues with I'm going to get to that a little bit later but basically it would only play the audio of the of the um, selected multimedia file it wouldn't play the video so that was a bit of a downer uh, under Office we're only going to fly through these quickly LibreOffice and People People I imagine is some sort of contact manager I'm guessing so I'll wait for that to load and see what happens yes indeed it is a contact manager under settings we have the disk manager, gparted, the java, the OpenGDK policy tool, we've got system settings, update manager and of course the VPNC GUI again which is a bit redundant and under system we've got all the basic KDE stuff as well as back in time and also an about section which will give you a few clues as to what Zevin OS is about you can see here that it gives you the, your basic system information, how long it's been running, and what it's based on. You can see here that uh, it's got the Ubuntu logo, the Debian logo, and it and lists the different team members and your hardware, etc., etc. So that's quite a helpful little uh, tool just to grab some quick information about your system. The Zevin OS team are indeed based in Germany and the default ISO image will boot into the German language by default but they also have of course the English option from the boot screen. They also have quick install guides in both German and English which is quite helpful for those of us who yeah, don't speak German. They also have an interesting custom tool here called Persistent Creator and basically what that does is they wanted this distribution to be available to uh, for, for USB install so you can use it as a portable operating system no matter what computer you're booting on. So you can see here that uh, they give you an option to change what size you want a persistent image for your USB stick to use and then you say create image. Basically what that'll do is it'll allow you to save your settings and documents etc on a separate partition on that USB stick that will constantly keep itself updated so it's almost like you've got a mini system inside that USB drive. It's not just running as a live system anymore it's more like an installed system so that's quite a helpful tool. Uh, they also have another little interesting directory here called install software. Now this is an interesting little inclusion from that it's actually just Dolphin File Manager but they have set up different little shell files where they list the most popular games that they would like uh, that they like to include and then you click on them and then it goes does a quick apt get command and will ask you for your password and then it will download and install those applications. So it's quite an interesting uh, little tool here. It's something very simple, something that anybody could incorporate into their distribution, but it's quite a nice little idea if you ask me. Moving along we have utilities and you can see that TrueCrypt here is installed, the Super Karamba desktop widgets are here, the rest of the KDE stuff and you can also see we've got the hardware manager that is uh, apparently uh, Zevin OS branded so we will we'll assume that they have made that themselves. You can see here that we've got an interesting little tool here that can help you install your drivers be they NVIDIA or ATI drivers so that's quite a nice idea again these are only apt get commands these are something that any professional user uh, or any pro user knows how to do but it's good to see these tools for those who don't. Find files and folders you've got your help section and all that other fun stuff that you've seen before so Basically, I want to talk about compatibility and performance now. Being based on Debian and also KDE 4.6.2 has brought a whole host of updates as far as performance is concerned. Ever since the KDE 4.6 release, KDE has been performing very well. Um, honestly, the system resources of, of uh, Zevin OS Neptune is minimal at best. They have really done a nice job in trimming this distribution down. It's only running the stock standard KDE, uh, KDE, man uh, KDE window manager 
uh, even with desktop effects enabled and uh, and all your um, effects running and different applications on local hardware I've only ever been using around about 400 megs of RAM you can see here we're running at 295 meg of RAM uh, with a few applications here open and this is inside VirtualBox so quite honestly it's it's quite a lightweight KDE distribution now even though KDE is uh, even though this KDE distribution is quite lightweight the Zevin, the Zevin OS ISO also includes a low memory desktop usage uh, which is based on Fluxbox. So if you have an even older machine, you can still use the same ISO and install Fluxbox instead of KDE. They still give you all of the main applications that they do with the KDE edition. It's just based on Fluxbox instead of KDE so it gets even lighter. Debian, of course, is very robust. It's very easy to install applications. Uh, those who aren't familiar with apt-get can, of course, use the uh, standard um, K-Package-Kit installers. But you can see here it's very much, it's just your standard categorized software manager. It's a bit prettier than Synaptic. But, you know, people complain and people, yeah, they, some people like it. It handles your, uh, your software updates and your installing and removing, so it's quite robust. And honestly, I'm glad they left it stock standard. The last thing we need is another awkward software manager. Secondly, I don't want to talk about uh, compatibility. On my system, it was a pretty smooth install, to be honest. Um, I did have some issues with sound, however. The sound was quite dim, and I couldn't seem to pump it up. Now, I think this is due to the fact that they are using the Alsa sound mixer as opposed to Pulse Audio, and I couldn't install Pulse Audio because of missing dependencies. So I'm not quite sure what that's about, but uh, then again, the sound still worked quite fine, I just couldn't get it up that, that loud. Uh, secondly, I also had some issues with, of course, proxy servers, as I've mentioned before, can be a, can be a very big pain, especially on Linux. But I have managed to have quite a bit of success with uh, proxies in the last uh, couple of months. But um, Debian the, uh, and AppGet didn't seem to like it too much. Um, having said that, I had, didn't have any other um, compatibility issues. Sleep and Resumed work very well, which is more than I can say for Ubuntu 11.04 as of present. Um, and quite honestly, it's, it's an impressive little distribution in its own right. Um, they've, they've done a nice job with some customizations here. It's very lightweight for KDE, which is great to see. Um, at this point, I can only find a 32-bit ISO. I believe there might be a 64-bit ISO out there, but you never know. If you want to download this, then uh, I recommend you use the torrents. They also do have, they do have direct download links on their website, which I'll put a link in the source code. Um, but I do recommend that you use the torrents uh, off linuxtracker.org, and I'll also try and put a link uh, to that in the source code as well. So that's Neptune OS. In my opinion, it's great for people who like KDE but uh, don't have the resources to run something like Kubuntu or Linux Mint KDE as those can be quite thirsty. Uh, but being based on Debian, it's very snappy, it's very lightweight. Uh, the packages are very easy to manage. They, it comes with a healthy selection of software to cover nearly all of your needs out of the box. Um, that's really all I've got to say about it. They include some very nice tools uh, considering the development platforms. Uh, LibreOffice and uh, and all the different customization tools and utilities uh, that of course you know KDE is now famous for. Uh, they've got some interesting uh, custom tools of their own, which uh, put an interesting spice on this uh, otherwise fairly vanilla KDE and Debian combo.